I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and as always, I'm thrilled you're here. I say this each week, how excited we are, but we really are excited this week because this is someone that you all fans have been asking for for a long time, and I've been a fan of his work, and I'm just thrilled to have him here. This is Tony James from Out of the Box. Tony, how are you? I'm great, Kerry. How are you today? I'm so good, and I'm so glad to get you on the show. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, honestly. I really appreciate it. Well, my pleasure. And it's an honor to have you on this show. Um, obviously, we have a lot in common um, from your show and, and kind of both how we grew up, but you've done so much else. So I kind of want to get into all the aspects of your of your career. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been in the arts my entire life. Like just, I, I was thinking about it uh, recently. You know, we have a lot of time to think these days and, and that's a great thing. And, um, you know, I realized I've, I've been performing, in the, been in the performing arts since I was in elementary school. You wow. know, I, I started playing uh, cello and singing and uh, narrating uh, plays and things like that in elementary school, which was, yeah. Well, I so, it. so what was the, the trigger, do you know, that got you interested in it? I think I just reacted um, music was the was really the entree for me I loved music and I loved songs and you know um when I grew up radio was a huge thing right and uh especially during the 70s like all the story songs you know were really great like the great singer songwriters who would tell you these stories and I loved I loved listening to the melodies I loved listening to the lyrics I love imagining what was going on and that hooked me and then when I got into uh, elementary school, I had the opportunity to join the uh, one of the orchestras, and I played cello. You know, I played cello and sang and stuff, and it, and it just got me. And I remember one of the first songs we learned was um, uh, uh, John Denver's Annie song. Do you remember that? I do. You fill up my senses. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that just hooked me, and I don't know, it just spoke to me. And uh, yeah, I've been in the arts ever since. Well, and, and I'm guessing as we're going to go through this, it's kind of prepared you for the things you did later, uh, because you, obviously you sing, you do voiceover, um, acting, I've seen you play guitar. I mean, there's just so much that you've done, and we're going to talk about Stomp as well. Um, was that something that you had planned from the beginning to learn different things and expand and try different areas of the, the performing world? Um. I don't know. I don't know that so much. I mean, I think I was just so, um, I just found it so engaging. I just found it, it's, it's expression, right? It's, it's feeling and it's expression. And that's been the through line. Like everything I do, it's about the feeling. Uh, a lot of it's not uh, preconceived. It's just what feels right. And then, okay, how do I, if I have to employ certain techniques to express this, fine I'll see what those are and make make it my own but it's always been about the feeling and just one thing led to another but all in lines with uh, creativity and expression does that make sense it does yeah, yeah it absolutely it ab by accident I've kind of tried a different I've tried a lot of different things in the performing world some I was not very good at but mm -hmm. but just feeling the need to try those things is that a little yeah. bit what you're talking about well, it, yes, and and I think the the you said you weren't very good at it, um, and and that's always something that I um, that's come up. I've spoken to a lot of other uh, artists, and we have this judgment mm -hmm. on ourselves. Oh, we're good. Well, we should do something that we're good at, and that judgment is usually in our heads, right? Right. But I really think the things that you you trying something or going for something that you feel that's the that's really the only thing, the most important thing. Right. Yeah. And sometimes we create and express and it comes out the way we intend or it doesn't. But I don't think labels like I wouldn't say it's good or bad. What's good is that we go for it and that you explored, you answered something. 
And and let me make that clear. That's exactly how I feel about it. And it was it was singing. And mm -hmm. I, I I took classes uh, as I was a piano player, and I took classes, and just I couldn't do it. I, I mean, I just I couldn't hit the note. I couldn't do it things. And my teacher said to me, if if your passion, if your voice was as good as your passion, I you'd be incredible. And she gave me an A for the class. And I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. Because I always would have wondered. So right. So, so I've learned sometimes it's okay and that you, you pick a different path. Right. You have to explore something, right? You have to explore something. And that's, again, that's the, that's the most important thing that you follow your heart. I mean, that's a through line in my entire life, you know, um, how things turn out. We don't control that, right? right? All we can control is to the best of our abilities. If, if we go for it, you know? So do you remember what was your first professional job? Oh, my first professional job. I'm um, going to throw all kinds of questions. That's out. okay. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> there's first... no right or wrong here. <laughs> I'm just curious. No, I think my first professional job. Uh, okay, well, professional as in I got paid to do it. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. There was in junior high school. I was in a band uh, called. Ready? Okay. It's a good thing you're sitting down. Called right. Electric Death right <laughs> junior high school uh my friends uh george and tito gonzalez were brothers and we had this band in junior high school and we called electric death and we got hired to be part of this documentary called continental drift done way back in the day and it was about all the the, the plates moving into the continent and all that stuff, continental drift and all that stuff um so I think that was my first professional job, <laughs> you know, where I got kind of paid for it to be in this thing. And it was great. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, was, I think I was in the eighth grade, maybe. Um, but then after that, really, the next thing that professionally, I think, well, actually, when I was, when I was at, uh, I, went to, I went to Berkeley in Boston. And um, you know, I was hired to do some sessions while I was there and, and play some gigs and stuff. But then really moving into the professional life, um, uh, I got in a band after, after college. And you know who, who was my bandmate because you interviewed him. Oh. Sean Altman from Rockapella. Wow. <laughs> so Sean, yeah, we had a band called Blind Dates. And <laughs> And, right, it was, and, and it was my first touring experience. We toured around the country and we were supporting this group from Australia called Eurogliders. And then we did a whole bunch of touring and supporting people like Greg Kinn and Laura Branigan and um, just a whole bunch of a whole bunch of people. So yeah, uh, and that tour was my, that was my first tour. Wow. That was my first tour. And that was so exciting because my whole, sort of life, it was go on the road, man, get on the road, you know, we're an American band, you know, the whole thing. So that was and, my first and what thing. were you doing? Were you playing guitar or singing? I was playing or... drums, actually. I was drums? playing drums. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was playing drums. No. So that was the, was that the first instrument that you? That was the Because I've seen you play guitar and obviously I've heard you sing. Right. So the drums I began playing in junior high school. So my first instrument was cello. And then um, when I got into junior high school, I actually wanted to play guitar then, but it, that wasn't available. So I ended up, I, I, I went to trumpet first <laughs> and then I just got just hooked on drums. And I had a wonderful band teacher who let me, uh, you know, play drums. So I started off with, you know, basic percussion, snare drum and bass drum and all that stuff but he would let me come to school early in the morning before school is supposed to start and practice. And so, yeah, that just, um, you know, Mr. Caruso. Yep. Uh, yeah. Strongly influential. Uh, so yeah, so drums was it. And then I just kind of, I went, I just went with that. That's really was so exciting to me. And, it, and <clears throat> I don't know that it was specifically the instrument, that really got me. I mean, again, it's all creativity and expression, but I think the physicality of it, I loved playing music. It was always about playing music and that was exciting. So then, um, yeah, I, I played drums in junior high school and then I auditioned for and, and was accepted at the High School of Music and Art, New York City, the Fame School, mm -hmm. um, which was fantastic and continued my studies there under Justin DeChocho. 
And uh, you know, it's funny, just thinking about this, every people recognize it as the fame school, LaGuardia, right? Right. But I was actually there the year they made fame. Oh, wow. Like really, like where, yeah. where uh, the producing directors came to the school and auditioned people and they created this whole thing called fame, which was originally entitled Hot Lunch. <laughs> but they changed, no, they changed the name to fame. So some of my friends are in the film and I was just a sophomore at the time. But um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, I continued my education with drums at, uh, at um, the Music and Art, and then I went on to Berkeley and studied more there, yeah. Well, it's got to be exciting at an early age. You're, and you're touring with all these people, and you're at these schools with all this stuff going on. I mean, to have that going on at an early age, it's got to be a little overwhelming and exciting and where do you go and what do you do? And well, you, you, you know, I had a conversation with a, a friend of mine, the other, a really good friend of mine, and, and he's produced stuff with me. He's an amazing guitarist, uh, Larry Mitchell, Grammy winning guitar player, engineer, and we've been friends for decades. And we we're talking about this. Um, it doesn't seem when, every, when all of your friends are doing it. So I went to arts high school and then I went to a college with everyone's doing it. So it doesn't stick out. And I was fortunate enough to be born and raised in New York, right? New York city. So that, I mean, so right. it's all around diversity, all the culture, all the everything and people are just doing things. So you, it's, it's a big deal because you're happy that you get to be involved in things, but it doesn't seem so unusual because all your peers are doing the same thing. That does that make sense? It does. It, it makes what just around. And no, I'm just fortunate I, to be born in New York. Right. <laughs> yeah. It makes a lot of sense, but it's it's fascinating. Yeah. We're here in Texas. I'm here in Texas. You know, I was very fortunate that Barney happened to be here, but that's we're not surrounded by it. Right. right. We're mm -hmm. we're not surrounded by it. You know, there we've had some productions and we've had some things. Right. But and obviously I've been to New York many a time. It's the energy of it and yeah. all that excitement is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's a magnificent city. When did you get into Stomp? Where does this come in? So Stomp came in uh, in '94, I think. Okay. Um, I had been touring, playing as a session musician, and touring, and I had done a you know, that I had a whole, fortunately had a whole career as a, as a, as a drummer, as a session touring musician, as I said, and then I had an opportunity. Um, it's, it's kind of a funny story, but anyway, I had an opportunity to take another tour and with a known artist. And at the same time, I got invited to audition for Stomp. And, um, you know, I kind of, you know, you learn when you're, well, you just go for it. You, you say yes. And you go, if something speaks to you, you just go for it. And I thought, and when I was, when I was actually chosen, I kind of, I said, you know what, I can either do this thing that I've been doing or go somewhere else. That's also speaking to me. That's a greater form of expression because now I'm incorporating more acting skills and more movement. And there's a, a wider field of expression and exploration. So yeah, that came about and I just, uh, I was very fortunate, you know, and I joined an amazing cast and an amazing group of people um, who I respect to this day. Just the creators, Luke Cresswell and Steve McNicholas, all my cast members, um, amazing, amazing. What an amazing show. Have you seen Stomp actually? I have seen Stomp. Yeah. Just, I mean, yeah, I I'm still blown away by what I see. Was that hard to step into? Um, because it's got to be a very physical show. I've got it's extremely it. physical, demanding. extremely physical. But but I I I've always been physical, so that's great. And I had so much musically. Um, I had so such a foundation, so much experience. I had, you know, fortunate enough to have like toured and done all this stuff for years before Stomp. So I walked in, um, feeling um pretty good about my ability to pick up things musically and to, I was very comfortable being on stage, my stage my whole life. Sure. Um, but 
it's it's its own beast and that's the thing about stomp it kind of almost doesn't matter what you've done before because stomp is stomp it's its <laughs> own culture it's its own thing so i was again very fortunate um i had great people um sort of bringing me up to speed and i kind of learned the show at the time yeah in a very relatively short amount of time because um it usually took a it doesn't matter i i went in and, and i did what i had to do i i i was very 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 fortunate and, and it was so much fun. The, the, the tough part, though, was my, my funny thing is my first show. Uh, I, you know, you go through all the rehearsals and you do your blocking and, you know, we, we have the we have the rehearsal before the first show. And I'm doing all the stuff and like, OK, here's my block, here's my cue, this and that. Now, you know, also stop. It's all in your head. There's no speaking. So you right. have to memorize 90 minutes of music top to bottom, nothing repeats. It's not verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, chorus out. So you have to have all that in your head. So, and it's a lot of physicality. You're using a lot of unorthodox uh, instruments, you know, uh, to create music. And you have to be in sync with seven other people. <laughs> so there's a lot to it, a lot of concentration. So we have the first, um, we have the rehearsal for the first show. Cool, great. Marking, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. First show comes out. <clears throat> Start, okay. Everyone puts their hands in. Good, let's do it. Go out. Show starts. Um, first routine is called hands and feet. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, first routine is brooms, actually. Uh, we do that. I'm like, cool, got it. Know my stuff. Good, moving. Mark. Then we go into hands and feet and you're doing the stuff and I'm remembering my marks and remember my music and we hit a certain point now these routines are not three minutes long these aren't three minute songs each routine is like probably a good eight minutes right or more and I'm and I'm just doing my thing I'm like okay great great inside and you got to look at you can't so you're not speaking to anyone you're just giving it to the audience and all of a sudden, it hits me. I'm like, wait a minute. My legs are burning. Oh my gosh. Uh oh, this is only the second routine. I have 12 more routines to go. And I'm already like fatiguing. And you just like, there's that thing like panic starts to set in because you're like, I have to physically do, I have no choice. Like, there is. There's nothing. I have to keep going. It's only the second routine. <laughs> and so I push through, I push through. We get to um, a uh, the last routine, which is called bins. And it's the ones with all the garbage cans, the, like everyone knows it. And there's garbage cans and garbage cans, lids and pipes and all the stuff. And I you you again, because you can't speak, you have to listen to the music and their musical cues right mm -hmm. and so there's this one cue in bins <clears throat> uh called uh, you know the, I, where i have to go and put on these things called skirts and there are these big plastic drums okay. that you wear like like that and uh the music don't 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 go so my what i say to myself put on your skirts put on your skirts right rehearsal i go do all my marking. I run to the back, put on my skirts. Guys, the guy back said, hey, you want me to help you get it on? I'm like, no, I'm good. I got it. I know what I'm supposed to do. Cool. That was rehearsal. Showtime comes, <laughs> put on your skirts. I go to the back. I am so out of breath. I can't speak. I'm like, and the guy's like, do you want me to help you? I'm like, <laughs> and I've got like, you know, two bars of music to get ready and be out on stage and look like I've own, I'm on it. I'm like, <laughs> and, I run to the, and I go out and do the thing and act like it's all great. But I'm like, I need to be on a respirator. I think like, nobody told me how incredibly tired I would be, how exhausted I would be. And it was just sheer determination to get through it. So that was the hardest part. It's just that you just don't know, like, oh my God, this is so 
exhausting. And, but then like anything else, you build up your tolerance and all that, sure. but that, that's, that was the difficult part. <laughs> and, but you're having so much fun. You know, it's such, it's such a fantastic show. And I'm so, so grateful to have been involved in it. How many shows did you do? Seven, eight shows a week. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, it was full, full New York, you know, theater. This was off Broadway. Yeah, Stomp is in New York. It's considered technically off Broadway um, because of the location, but everywhere else in the world is Broadway. And that was, that was by design by the careers. They wanted to keep that downtown East Village vibe in New York. But every other house across the country, and I did the, some some of the touring as well. Was they're all Broadway houses? Was that fun to tour? Was yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we had some fantastic times. And getting, you know, I love audiences. I love being with people. You know, I, I love that connection, the relationship between the person expressing on stage and the audience receiving, and what we get back from them. That's that's always been it for me. The live situation. I've got to think. There, some of these, even in New York, some of these people are showing, seeing the show that don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And so there's got to be this, these cool reactions to this yeah. show of, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. It was wonderful to see their faces and brilliant with, the, with Luke and uh, Steve and all the, the original Brits who like created that show. It just, what's so brilliant is that because there's no language, mm -hmm. there's no barrier. It's all emotions, it's all acting and reacting. And what you don't expect is the humor. You don't expect the musical humor because you don't have to, you can tell a musical joke by just what you play, just by the tones, by the rhythm, by the, and then of course, you know, the, the actors further enhance that with their facial expressions and, you know, body language, but um, it's so brilliant because it could play anywhere right? Other countries and, and just, it doesn't matter. Everyone relates to emotion and feeling and everyone gets it. That's it. I'm with you a thousand percent. That's exactly what's so cool about that, that anyone can, I mean, it's the language of music, right? And, and everyone understands that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know as I'm doing this interview, everyone's going, ask him about out of the box. Sure. So I've, I've got to, I've got to go to it. So where did this come from, come in your career? So let's see, this was after touring after Stomp. Um, uh, I was playing, yeah, I was doing my own music, playing guitar, singing, playing with bands and stuff. Um, and um, uh, I got a call from my friend, uh, David Yazbek. And I don't know if you know who David Yazbek is, but he's a Tony and Emmy Award winning musician, lyricist, writer, composer. Um, and he let me know that, that Disney had a, were shooting a pilot for the show and that uh, he heard about it. And he said, I think they've already cast it, but um, I you know, refer, recommended you to, to uh, be executive producers. And he told me about the character. Um, and he said, I think that you're, you would be great for it. So maybe they'll give you a call. Maybe they won't. You know, it's just one of those things. Right. Throw your name into a hat. And so uh, sure enough, I get a call from them and says, you come highly recommended and, and everything's, would you like to come down and meet with us and we can tell you what's going on? And I said, of course, absolutely. So again, never intended in my life thinking like, oh, I'm going to be in children's television, right. but it was just another thing, you know? Um, uh, so yeah, just why an, not? An opportunity, right? She just, just an, yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, again, creativity, expression. Okay, right. fine, you know? Um, so I uh, went down and met with Douglas Love and Ellen Gustenberg Kent, and they laid it out for me and they essentially said that they were looking for someone who would come in, they, that they had this clubhouse and there was one person who would bring the kids to the clubhouse and they would do, you know, five minutes of music with the music person and five minutes of art with an artist. And, um, and, and that was that. And they said, we're looking for someone who is, who can act, who's a musician, um, who can play percussion and actually junk percussion would be great. 
who can work with the kids <laughs> and they sat and who can sing and who can do all these things. And uh, it was, I, then he said, so what do you think? And I kind of laughed <laughs> and it was the only time I've ever done this. I was like, well, I, what you just described <laughs> is it's what I do with, you know, it's, not, it's what I do. And I had at, even prior to that, I had worked with the, um, Urban Youth Theater of uh, Henry Street Settlement in New York. So I was a composer and musical director for uh, some of their plays. Um, and so I was used to working with younger people and um, obviously the percussion stuff and the junk percussion with stomp and all that stuff and I can act and I could sing and all this stuff. So it just, it just made sense, you know? And I thought, of course, I'd love to go for it. And they're like, great, we'll put you on tape and send it to Disney and, um, that was that but an interesting thing like i said was that they they were originally three adults right oh, and so yeah my character was just the music guy that they would visit in a section of the box and viv's character was they would do art and uh um and i think her name originally actually was marcy and mine was supposed to be david <laughs> and so we didn't even use our real names initially but we shot the pilot and the person who was leading it was um, more like a, I would term more like a Blue's Clues type character. Sure. Um, and, and he would bring in wonderful, wonderful, talented guy. Anyway, we shot the pilot. They, you know, what came back after they did the testing and just said, hey, we actually, I guess they feel like we don't need three adults with three kids. And so they offered it to myself and Viv. And uh, one of the things that I said was that I, I would like to use my real name. I just felt that would be, we, and we, they agreed, be better interaction with the kids, make it more authentic. And so, yeah, so that's, that's how Box happened. Um, and we just went in and did what we could do. Yeah, well, and it turned out to be a huge hit. It's been very successful. Yeah. And uh, people absolutely love it. And love what you did on that show. And Viv, obviously, the, yeah, the, oh, absolutely. the two of you. She is magical. She is absolutely magical. Well, so I'm smiling as you're telling these stories because, it, you know, this is where the connection comes in yeah. to start because I I never planned to be children's entertainment as well. That was not my plan. Right. Not that I really had a specific plan, but, you know, I wanted to be in the in industry and I, I wanted to be a performer and I had never actually been in a costume and they said, you know, really, uh, I'd never been in a costume. I was a piano player in, in college. Wow. And well, it's kind of like what you said earlier. This is what the connection is. You said, well, you just do it, right? You just say yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I can do it. And then I, I figured it out <laughs> later and I got at, can you dance? Sure. I can. I, I couldn't dance. My right. it's famous story I've told on this show a couple of times, but my mom was a, a professional dancer. <laughs> so she taught nice. me how to dance. And so, you know, you just, you just do it. You just go for it. Right. But I learned very quickly the responsibility of being on a kid's show. And it's, mm -hmm. the, it, it's absolutely changed my life. What mm -hmm. the, the kids, the audience yes. gave back to me is the most incredible thing. And I, I got to tell you, I was so touched watching you on your Instagram feed the other day. I think it was TikTok reading letters from people oh, that yeah. have sent you and what, yeah. what, you have meant to people and it's obviously been important to you because authenticity Absolutely. is the key to all this is why it, it works if you're in children's entertainment because kids can understand fake and cheesy and all that stuff and it, it's obvious watching both of you how important this Thank was you. when did you start realizing you know and i understand it's a character and i understand it's it's tv but it is children's tv and there's an an importance to that and and this there are several things with that. That was that was um, paramount to the creators. Douglas Love was very like, we need to make this. This has to be real. And anything that I did, I always wanted to make real. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, singing, right. dancing, you know, sweeping floors. Make it make it real. You have to show up. You have to be be yourself because the, not only does the camera not lie, but you don't want to lie. You want to have authentic connection with people. And yes, you're using certain parts of yourself, but it's still you, right? right. Um, so that the whole idea of authenticity is, is um, 
has been paramount in my life, period. Uh, and one of the people that I had to the good fortune to work with who really epitomized that was, was Fred Rogers. And I worked with Fred, um, I had the opportunity to work with Fred before Box. And this was years before Box when I was in Stomp and um, got to spend time with him and, and talk to him. And what I love about him was that what, that was him. Like, you know, there was, when the cameras were off or you're talking to him back in the offices or whatever like that, it wasn't a different person. He, that's who he was, right? And a definite, like, adult person, right. just, you know, like all of us. But that authenticity, just, it, that just so resonated with me. So, um, uh, and when I got Box, I actually reached out to him and let him know that this sort of thing got, got out of the blue happened. And I knew he was very happy for me. Um, but you're working, yes, there is a responsibility. And I think your responsibility is to, is to tell the truth, right? To tell the truth and come from the best place you can conceive of. Um, yeah, not to get too heavy, but. No, I, I, I love that. And it's funny you say that about, uh, I never thought about that using your names. I think that just adds to it. Absolutely, absolutely. Because when, we're, when, you're, when you're not you know, rolling, Right. cameras are not rolling you're interacting with the kids and the kids were wonderful i mean and so th they wanted that relationship right that you develop with them to to transfer on to the when when you are rolling you know so we just such a fantastic group of people such a fantastic family so again so grateful so honored to have been part of that it's funny you mentioned uh, Fred Rogers. I met David Newell, who played mm -hmm. Mr. McFeely, and I was going to say you probably have met David as well. And my early days in Barney, uh, we did an event in Houston, Texas, and he was there. Mm -hmm. And I was already starstruck because I watched Mr. Rogers as a kid all the time. And he, he was as himself, David, and he introduced himself. And he went in this other room, and he changed in. And the door opened and he said, speedy delivery. And I right. just nearly, and he went right into care. I mean, he was right there. The authenticity right. you're talking about. And I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. They understand that. And yeah. so I, it's he, just, it's amazing. When, when we first, I, I, when um, the episode that we did with uh, Fred um, uh, was really eye-opening to me and, and in, in terms of observing all of us as, as human beings and, and, and performers. And so Stomp, which you've seen, it's very like, you know, aggressive and I mean, and gentle and fun and stuff, but there's a, you know, right. There's a thing. This is, <laughs> this is factory, New York, downtown, you know, and when you bring, when you bring the heat, you bring the heat, right. You bring the comedy, but you bring the heat. So you know, he, we're all there and everyone's even man, women, all of us just, you know, tough guys and whatever in getting right. in our characters, he shows up and we're like little kids, just him walking in and saying hello. And we're sitting there with our, you know, hands folded, like we're be, we're behaving Mr. Rogers. We were, and it was so funny. I'm looking, I'm like, look at all of us, you know, all that tough guy stuff went out the window and we just wanted to behave for Mr. Rogers to show him that we were being good. And we were also, it, it was, yeah, it's just so wonderful. So it's a similar thing where you just like, oh my gosh, you know? And, and then how was he with, with that, what you were doing? It, it, it was not what, his response and all of that. Oh, he was, he was himself. It's what you would expect. He was fantastic. He was, he was just engaged with everyone and gentle and interested and, you know, um, encouraging, just very loving. And, and so, yeah, he's fantastic. He's the real, the, what you saw, that was, that was Fred. And again, having the opportunity to spend time with him even after that was so wonderful. And having, you know, being in conversation with him, um, he was truly authentic. And so when Box came along, that was something as a, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, not to specifically emulate him, mm. 
but to say, yes, authenticity, find the place in yourself, find the thing that's real for you, and then express that in your way, in your voice, because that's the only way you can do it, right? You trying yeah. to be trying to play music like somebody else or trying to paint like someone else or dance or sing like someone else. You know, um, <clears throat> the singing thing. So this is something that we're all very sensitive about. And, you know, there's there's a saying that, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, you know, we have the voices that we're, we're given and we all I firmly not just believe, but I know we all have something to share and to say, and it can come out in so many different ways. We're not limited. But you we're our job is to use our voices, literally and figuratively, that's our job. That's our only job, what anyone else does what anyone else thinks about it, that's not up to us. That's not our purview. We're, I believe that we're here to express who we are, to define it for ourselves and then express that and allow for growth, allow for change as well. Yeah, anyway. No, I love that. And I think that's the importance of shows like Out of the Box because kids, the, the, when you're a kid, right, you, you, these shows teach them to, to grow up and to have confidence and try and be creative. And then when we become adults, we worry about stuff and we stop doing stuff. And we, you know, the reason I got on that stage was because I had, had parents who were encouraging, you can do anything. Right. And, and I was, I, it's one of the greatest gifts my parents ever gave me. My dad was like, why can't you do that? You know? And, your dad a performer as well? He Did was. He was, a, a, he was a drummer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he was a drummer. Mom was a dancer. Sister's an artist. So everyone is oh, great. We've all tried different family. things. Yeah. Um, and so, but not everyone has that. And, and you that, see it for kids mm -hmm. that would take all these chances and do these incredible things. And then they become adults. And it's, you know, whatever it is, it stops them. It, it really is something that it kind of bothers me. Yeah, but maybe it's society or whatever it is. And I, I will tell you, there is an aspect of social media that I do like that some people just get out there <laughs> right, and just do they do them. Well, we have never been in a, as artists, we have never been in a better time. Right. So I, I again, my experiences are very I, just, I keep saying that, but, but it's true. I sit in so much gratitude for my life. Um, you know, I've taken my looks just like everybody else, but I, but I'm just so grateful for the things I've been able to be involved with and the people I've been able to interact with, like yourself. Um, but um, the, I, I had a band uh, 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 called Maggie's Dream, right? Yes, We're I a capital. You know, Maggie's okay. Capitol Records, fantastic group of guys, fantastically talented, um, just amazing, unique, um, all New Yorkers. Uh, and we would, we would go places and um, we, even with all the support that we had from the label at the time, we would show up places and um, our names wouldn't be on the marquee. Um, um, th and again, this is way before internet. This is way before social media. But even with the support of a label, even with, and, and like real support. Right. Thing, we just couldn't get out there. Distribution was a thing, you know? I mean, like yeah. you needed, you needed the, the larger corporations just to be heard, to be seen. Right. And then even if you had that, that still was no guarantee. Right. That you would, you know, that you, your name would be on the marquee or that anyone right. wouldn't know that you're there. And, you know, there was only MTV. And right. if you didn't get played on MTV, that was it. But now you can write, shoot, record everything and get it out to the world. So, and that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, there's a lot of freedom in that. It, it's it is it's funny you say that you know barney was on pbs and it was a lucky thing that someone happened to watch it that called and and it got on pbs and it was canceled after the first year 
Really? It was canceled. And yeah, they're having the rap party planning on the second second season and it was canceled. Oh, and man. luckily the parents, the moms called in all their local stations and basically saved it. Wow. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because it wow. was, um, there was only three shows at that time. It was Shiny Time Station. Uh-huh. And it was uh, Sherry Lewis and Lamb. Yes, 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 yes. And Barney. And they had decided they could only do two shows. And then they had to bring Barney back. Thank goodness for that. But wow. yeah, I mean, there was just not those opportunities. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm curious. Can we go back to like your first experience being in the costume? Like you, you weren't a puppeteer, per se. That wasn't your training. You no. had to just, they just asked you and you said yes, like without any yes of course you i mean and and um, you could sing and you could do but but like what was that like because that's not easy like, I, so i did it you're gonna really laugh about this i did it for birthday parties so okay. what had happened was they had done a few videos there was three videos out there it wasn't even a tv show at this point and a lady in texas went to them and got an official license to have birthday parties where Barney showed up at your birthday party in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay. And so they, the person that was doing this was going off to college and they needed someone else. And someone knew I was a musician and said, you know, you're in the business, you should try. I went and met her and kind of auditioned and she said, I'll call you and you know, the next part, she'd never called me. So I found her number and I called her and she said, I've actually already hired someone. Um, but he asked for the first month off. Could you do a month? And then I'm going to try and have a second team. Oh. <laughs> I got really good at it. She kept just me. Then the TV show happened and they needed a second person. So I came and did the second person. Okay. Then they said, do you want a tour? Next thing I know, I toured all over the country for five years. Wow. And then what? they said, you want, to do, wow. you want to do Barney and Friends? And I did the TV show for 12 years. Wow. So it it just magnificent. Just, just kept going. Just wow. Kept going. Just kept going. So I know exactly what you're. You know you you just take a take a chance and yeah. yeah. Well, I, congratulations I was to you. That's that's magnificent because it's you know I mean I was just thinking like I was able to rely on my face, my facial expressions to communicate things. It's so difficult because you, I mean. For that costume also has to weigh a certain amount. It has to be right. in really warm inside, but you still have to convey things and right, and you have to sink to somebody else's. I mean, that's really difficult, Carrie. I applaud you. Well, thank you. It, that's it, really it's the kids. It, it yeah. there's because you can feel it, you know. I mean, yeah. I remember doing a show in Minnesota, I've told this many times, but 16,000 people. Yeah. 16,000 people yeah. Yeah. come to see Barney and it's the power it's of it because amazing. there's just lights. There's no, you know, right. now we have to have all these sets and all these things. Mm -hmm. There was nothing other than Barney singing and dancing. Obviously I'm lip syncing for 30 minutes to entertain 16,000 people and they're mm. singing every word and they're hugging their parents and they're kissing their parents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've yeah. never seen anything like it. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever yes, seen. It is. Yeah. It's incredible. 16,000. Wow. It's incredible. But I, I saw that with your show. And I think that's what's so cool. I was watching um, one today, the goodbye song, obviously, that was very popular was your show. And I saw it was one with the pumpkin, uh -huh. where you Probably just grabbed right. the pumpkin and basically did kind of a stomp thing on that. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's just brilliant. Like, that that's just it, it, it felt so authentic. It's so natural. You just grab it. She was like, perfect. It, you know, I think it was just so simple. It's kind of what we're talking about here, right? Right. You didn't really need all this stuff. It was just the two of you in a pumpkin. And what you have, yeah. The 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 people often ask me about this. Um, and and I think about the show is more, and you probably have a similar experience. It's it's more profound to me now what was actually really going on and um this whole idea of coming together getting into like a, a clubhouse and in this clubhouse you take 
from, you draw from what's there to create something, right? You come together and you each bring something and you pull something that's already there, pull from something that's already there and you create this whole thing. So if you're telling a story and there's a river, oh, take this blue cloth and we'll wave it, you know, just, just so many different things. And this whole idea of the internal clubhouse, <laughs> we come together or you come inside and you pull from whatever is inside you, right? You show up in a, in a situation, if you and I get together, don't know what's gonna happen, but if you show up fully and bring everything that's carry, every, every experience in your life, and I show up and I bring every experience and say, okay, so we're pulling from our clubhouses. What, what, do, you, what do we want to do? Oh, we, some, we might put, in, we put it together in ways we, what neither one of us independent of each other would have, would, would have come up with. And that is profound. The, 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 <clears throat> the importance of showing up and whatever, being fully present, that just, that just hits me in so many ways. That's why I've been able, one of the reasons I guess I've been fortunate and able to do different things is I just, I just show up. You know, but Box was about that. You didn't need external things because it's never, ever about out there. <laughs> it's always about in here. No matter what way you slice, it's always about what's in here. It's never about out there. And I love seeing that in life. I love seeing that in Box. So yeah, we're, it's, it's the end of an episode and okay, goodbye song. Oh, oh, it was a pumpkin. Holla. Okay, great. Or whatever it is. Um, and I just love that. I love that. What was that like for you? Because obviously I had that experience, you know, in every episode we sang the I Love You song. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's magical. It, even, you know, I mean, for people that don't understand, you know, when you're filming a show like this, it's, you know, producers and directors and camera mm -hmm. people, and it's an empty, you know, it's a big studio that's empty. And you're mm -hmm. singing this song, you know, just looking at <laughs> some walls. The lens. Yeah, be, right. right. Mm -hmm. But it's magical every time. It's the, as soon as that song starts, like yeah. all the performers could just feel. We knew what we were doing. Right. We knew that it meant something to all those kids. That yes. oh my gosh, you know that song's playing. Same with your song. Yeah. So when you're doing that, is there a? Do you get a little chill to it? Does it energize you? What you know? What do you go through the, doing that? The whole experience is energizing. Um, Viv and I, because we're in front of the cameras, we get all the attention and all the credit. Right. But you know very well that it takes a village, as they say. It takes a whole slew of people to make this thing work. Everyone, our job just happened to be in front of the camera. Right. But, you know, writers, producers, directors, uh, lighting guys, uh, you know, makeup, hair, everything, you know, um, and knowing that everyone's come together for this singular purpose, which is to bring this goodness and this light, that whole experience is energizing. So yeah, you know, it's also fatiguing, right? Like you, like, okay, you're in the costume, you're dancing, you're moving around and you're, you know, sweating and trying yeah. to do all the stuff and remember you're blocking and all the things that go into it, right? But you know, you're all there to work for this one thing. And that is so beautiful. And that's energizing. And when you know that you're doing that, yes, yes, it, 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 it fills you. So you can get through whatever you need to get through because you know what the purpose is. And everyone in the Box family, and I'm sure it's same with, with, with the Barney family, knew what the purpose was. And, and that's, yeah, magnificent. Yeah, it, it's the truth. Every one of them, uh, my, one of my favorites, you know, we obviously we get very tired. And there'd be, camera, <laughs> there'd be cameramen that, because you're just standing there and catching your breath and all that. And they'd be doing hand signals you know, to help you make sure you're just, mm -hmm. there's all that little stuff that you just, you know, everyone was present. No one was just showing up That's for a right. page, right? We all have to make money in this industry, yeah, right. but that was not the number one motivator for anyone no. on that set. And it sounds like the same for your set. Yeah, not, not at all. I mean, just everyone was there and, it, and that's a, such a wonderful feeling to work with people, to spend time with people in general who 
are there with with purpose and it's it's a it's a common purpose you know and that purpose is for goodness so yeah absolutely. now what was it like because I, I i was watching something with you guys and we went through the same thing obviously that the kids on the set have to go to school so there's mm -hmm. laws mm -hmm. involved and in all of that yep. so you have to be you as an adult you have to be really on your game Yes, because there's so, so many takes you can do and things like, you know, right. the, the worst thing that ever happened is if I blew a take. Right. Right. Because it right. could have been the one when the kids, <laughs> they, you, 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 there's a man with experience, right? And you, you, you know it. Bill and I would joke about that, you know, say we have to be on all the time and you like three, three different, it's like, oh, you just, you got to be on. So, um, yeah. Uh, so the way we did it, like, I'm sure we had the kids all come. Um, uh, we had three kids per episode. So we have six and we do we do two episodes a day because you can only because of the labor laws, you can only right. have them work for half a day. Um, all six would come. The morning group would go to set. The other group would go to school and then they would we'd have lunch and then we flip flop. But so we were doing, we were shooting two episodes a day. We were working on wow. two different episodes a day. And, but we would, yeah, we knew we had to be on point. But the kids, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really difficult because we had, again, so much help. The kids were fantastic. All the kids were fantastic. Um, and we had like one unsung hero that I want to say publicly. <laughs> Sharon Carlson, who is who was the talent coach and director for the kids and and just such a talented vocalist and actor and 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 working with kids to give help them relax and, and find authenticity in their performance. Like people like that just made our job so easy. So I love Sharon Carlson and <laughs> and I love them all. And but with with just just in that area with the kids. That was her domain, and you you add fantastic little actors, wonderful people come with wonderful families, wonderful loving, supportive families, because uh, that's a big part of it. You know, there's so I can't stress this enough. Viv and I are the face of the show, but my goodness, the seventy five other people from the editors, the writers, the the parents, the teachers, the the everyone the art department come comes like it wouldn't if you love the show you love it because of them right because of all of them and so anyway no it's i i love it i absolutely love it did did you ever get a chance to meet fans of the show outside of it yeah yes yes i still do it's it's amazing what has happened like i, I mean Ever since, so the first time we got to go out was we did, Viv and I hosted these uh, Playhouse Disney live tours um, after one of the, in between the seasons. And we got to go out for the first time into the, into the, into the country and talk about, wow, thousands of people showing up to see these things. Like, again, you, you know it very well. That was the first time we were like, Oh my God, it was just so wonderful. It was so wonderful to see all the families and, and um, yeah, really magnificent. So that's the first time it hit us. And then as the show was on the air more and more, you know, just being out in public, um, people would come up and say wonderful things, always, always loving, always sweet. Um, and so, you know, the show ran, you know, for a lot of years, I think it was seven years every day. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, e even in recent years, well, ever since, everywhere I go, even with a mask on, right? <laughs> I go into a Home Depot and I have a mask and a Costco and right, and they're like, oh my God, Tony, <laughs> show, you know, I'm like, oh, how do you even know? these this audience of the parents the kids who are now adults and have kids of their own right they floor me they reach out with so much love just love 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 and they've been consistent and this whole like you mentioned looking at tiktok that whole thing 
who knew that was because of my my daughter you know <laughs> you know like my daughter you know called me up and said hey this helped tell me this whole story about what happened and they didn't believe it and would you say something and i had heard of tiktok from my from a really good friend dave hoffman his daughter hope had told him mentioned it to him and dave hoffman is a talk about vo like vo legend vo king uh <laughs> my god i love that guy uh he told me about it because his daughter anyway um and so i'd heard of it and but i knew nothing about it. i wasn't involved um until my daughter mentioned it to me and asked me if i would say something and then the whole thing just amazing <laughs> so yeah the fans have been consistently for 20 plus years <laughs> been wow. just amazing loving i'm so really really grateful I, I mean you have to know it. you feel it you get it like when people you know find out who you are and what you've done i mean gosh your legacy is amazing it's it, amazing it's it, legacy it's an honor life. though right it's it's yes. uh, yeah i mean it's it's it changed my whole life it, it absolutely and i mean and i don't mean by the success of the show i mean by what I saw from the good of kids and what they taught me and, and mm -hmm. love and kindness and all the things we talk about. I mean, I saw things I'd never thought I'd see before, right? Going into hospitals and seeing six kids that are, yeah. are fearless and we've done Make-A-Wish kids yeah. and the kids at the, at the show, you know, that would say, daddy, I love you and hug them and kiss them. Mm -hmm. And even their parents are like, <laughs> you know so it's amazing it really is incredible you know <clears throat> love that's what i'm saying the power of love you know that's all there is that's all it is right nothing there's nothing more it's, we are it's very really that simple isn't it? it it is it is that simple we make it more complicated you know, you know, you've heard the saying, you know, there are only two emotions, <clears throat> love or fear, and only one of them is real. And that's love, you know, um, yeah, love. So I, I, there's just so much love. There's so much love. And I think, you know, there was a, there was a point where, you know, like that sort of like, it's not cool to be about love. It's not cool to stand in love. It's so, I don't know, warm and whatever. It's like, hey, man, you know, I'm going to stand in love every single day, even when it's hard, even when it doesn't feel good. You know, and if you think that doesn't take courage or strength, there is nothing wimpy about standing in love when it doesn't feel good. Right. So, but the power of it, you see it in children. And, and the more that we can, encourage that instill that in, in children and and stand it and represent it as adults they need to see that you know absolutely they need to see that absolutely. demonstrated and and absolutely you know so are you being able to do that to to i mean uh, again i applaud you this is me applauding you well, i thank you but i would applaud you back because i know you know watching and seeing what you've done and i i've seen things you've done since the show and you're doing the same thing you're you're you can just see the authenticity and and it's it's just so important it's yeah. so important to have people out there doing this and understanding this and you know I, I what I what I love talking about love is that I think people are getting more comfortable doing it yes right yes. in the 90s mm -hmm. it wasn't comfortable to tell someone I love you for whatever mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. so I think you're seeing more of that which is excites me yes it is very exciting and yes i agree i see much more of it i see yeah we are living in some wonderful times we are living in some wonderful times sure there's enough out there <clears throat> where people might say the opposite okay that's fine it is also true that we are living in some amazing and wonderful times and and, and you know, sitting in gratitude about that and, and reinforcing that because we get to decide, we get to choose. It's always a choice, right? It's always a choice. And, you know, um, yeah, I keep saying it over and over, but it's, 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 
which is just gratitude. You know, um, talking about authenticity again, and, and you'll find that some of the most um, impactful people in life, they, what you relate to, there's, there's, there's technique, there are technical aspects of things. When you watch a, um, a musician, listen to a musician or watch a, a dancer or see a painter or anyone do anything, when they do it with passion and authenticity, that's way more impactful than technique, right? Technique, yeah, it matters, but it only goes but so far. So I think we're having the Olympics now, yes. right? You are impressed with technique, but you're moved by passion, right? When you, when you see someone going for it, when you, it's that expression. Um, and I've been fortunate to work on so many different areas, so many different levels, so many different areas on the stage, off the stage, front of the camera, behind the camera. And I have such a strong appreciation for every role. And I've been able to work with some really fantastic artists. And, and one of the things that, that I've seen watching them and being really close, right, is their authenticity, their true dedication to the audience, what they're saying, and their true desire. Some of the best ones, the strongest ones, really care about what they're doing. They really care about the audience. They really care about what they're saying. They take it as a responsibility. They know what they're saying, and they really care, and it's genuine. And those guys connect with the audience because we all know truth. We all know truth, right? And truth is not up here. It's in here, right? So that's just, again, encouraging all of us from the time we we're children as best we can to be who we are, to be authentic, to be our true selves and let that go into all these areas, you know? You play, I know you do a lot of things. Another thing that I found that we have in common. Uh oh So talk about just <laughs> getting into so many different things and exploring um, these different areas, whatever speaks to you. I know you're into photography, you're a photographer, right? I always love cameras and, and things. And a few years ago, really got into, you know, photography just because it feels good. No, you know, there's no, there's no in order to, it's simply just because it feels good. When we're younger, <laughs> You talked about you talked about what happens that the from the point that we're children and what happens uh, when yes. we become adults. One of the things that we do is we limit ourselves. When you're when we're young, we go to school, and during the course of the day, you study seven different things, right? Math, science, reading, you know everything, history, and you're used to doing that until and you go to college right and if you do that and you decide to do that and yeah you study different subjects and blah blah, blah. it's when we get out then we think oh i've got to define one thing and do this one thing so we're no longer expanding we're no longer learning we're no longer you don't study math because you want to be a mathematician you don't study literature because you want to be a writer or history. you do it because it enhances you right but we get into this thing that we think oh, I'm supposed to do this one thing and that's it. Like, and, and if I don't do this thing as well as I think someone else is doing, then that's not for me. We limit ourselves. And I think we do ourselves such a disservice because we can learn and grow just because. Like, if it doesn't make me money, there's no point in doing it, right? And I think we cheat ourselves. So I think we can learn a lot from from, we learn so much from children and we can learn so much from um, being in touch with that purity and that openness from childhood and carrying that through into our adulthood. And to that point, it's interesting that you, you found out that about me. I went back to school at 42 to learn how to do photography. Yeah. And I met my mentor, who is one of my favorite people on this planet. We talk about shout outs. 
I have to give one to Vernetta Thomas, yeah. who is the most incredible photographer. And she was a paralegal who decided mm -hmm. she wanted to do something later in life. And she went into the creative world in the photography and changed, changed, you know, at 40 something years old, I started seeing the world differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I already had a creative eye, but she got me to, to use it even more and, and opened up this new world to me yeah. that was incredible. So it, good for you. Good it, well, for you. it was That's just, I have a camera, I should go learn and look what I stepped into. <laughs> so. And you are you, you are your Canon shooter? I'm a Canon shooter. You're a Canon shooter. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, a Canon shooter and I use Fuji as well. Okay. Uh, for the mirrorless. Sometimes right, I'll right. Go with a smaller camera and do that. But yeah, I've been a Canon person all along. It's the colors, the colors, right? And the feel. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. Well, now I need to see some of your work. And so we'll have to do it. <laughs> we'll have to do something else. You know, it's I, I shoot to get for the for the joy of it. And I love I love capturing. <clears throat> people and showing people how beautiful they are like so you and I have we're having this conversation you probably don't realize how beautiful you are but you can't see how beautiful you are you can't see the 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 thousand different expressions you've made during the conversation and I love that a camera can catch that one moment and go look at you you're magnificent I love finding that I love finding that with people, you know, like, like, look at how magnificent you are. You know, that's really exciting to me. And I it's, love that the camera can do that. It's funny you say that because that's what I say to, when I'm doing portrait work. Mm -hmm. That's what I say to them. I, give me the look when you walked in this room and I first met you and you had that big smile. That's what I want. Yeah. Just when you were being you and you weren't right. thinking of a camera, you weren't thinking right. of anything else. That's what I want to see, because you mm -hmm. just showed me your best shoe right there. When you walked in, all of a sudden I picked this big thing up and now you're you know, panicking and worried and all this right. stuff. And I don't take good pictures. I'm like, you do. You do. Absolutely right. every single person does. And it's funny, the thing, we keep talking about it, but the things that block us, stop mm -hmm. us from being mm -hmm. being us. Yeah. And, and there's there's nothing there's nothing more wonderful than being us. Right. That's our that's our job. Because and there's only one us. There's there's no such thing right. as competition. Like that's an illusion. You cannot compete because you cannot be someone else. And and by the same time, no one else can be you, right? Like no one. You only you can be you. And the journey is being you, you finding that, you know, and only you can define who you are. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, photography and you know, it's all creativity and expression and that that journey, that exploration and love, man. I, I can't even tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you, Tony. It's just been such a pleasure. Thank you. Likewise, likewise, Carrie. I, I gotta ask real quick real quickly as we're wrapping up here, but what are you doing now? What do you what's next for you? I am I what's next is every magnificent thing the universe has planned for me. I love it. That's what's next. Um, I do music. I I do voiceovers. I I do a lot of learning. I have other projects that I'm, you know, working on that will probably come out later this year. Um, yeah, but really, you know, they say, you know, you've heard that saying, you want to make God laugh. Tell her your plans. So <laughs> I, <laughs> my plan is to do every magnificent thing the universe has. You know, I wish I would have learned that a long time ago, because obviously <laughs> now I don't have any plans because of exactly that. But boy, when you're younger, you plan everything and then yeah. realize that it didn't work that way. No, yeah. no. But, you know, it's part of the thing. You got to you can't you can't get there from here. Like you just have to journey, you know. But again, Carrie, thank you so much for having me on your show. I, I really I really appreciate I really appreciate it. Well, it's really. just been, a, a, you've someone I've wanted to have on a long time and I'm so glad you've been here and it's just been a pleasure having you on this show. Is, is there any way I could hear a little bit of the goodbye song? Oh, uh, uh, did I put you on the spot? Yeah, um, the, 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 sure, I mean, I'm gonna tap here. Mm, maybe I should tap here.
So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. I said so long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. It's been great to play and sing together in the box, but now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for watching Purple Roads. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your purple road. We'll see you next week.